I speak to you in the name of the one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. My name is Aaron. Hi. Uh, and I was invited to come and be your guest preacher this morning. So just a quick bit of information for you. Uh, I am the youth pastor and associate priest at St. Thomas Episcopal Church up in Menasha, just up the road. Um, I like movies, Rice Krispie Treats, long walks on the beach. Uh, I have four kids, two dogs, and one wife. Uh, John, Noah, Mark, Molly, Bubba, Pepper, and Shannon. I'll let you figure out who's who. <laughs> So I was asked to come and preach here today because today is Consecration Sunday. All right. Every fall, we ask you for money. Like, you know it's coming, right? You know what I mean? It's important because we have to keep the lights on. We are people to pay. We have to buy donuts and all those important things. Um, but is that all that today is about? Is there something deeper, something larger? Could there be some other thing going on here as well? I invite you to grab the piece of paper that you were handed as you walked in this morning. Um, it looks like this. I actually have a like copy that's sort of like on nice wood here. Um, and this was actually given to me as a gift by my dear friends who preached at my ordination to the priesthood, uh, Holly and Dixon. Um, and all of you should have a copy. If you don't have a copy, uh, just sort of put your hand up. There'll be ushers that can hand them out so you don't have it. Um, that is yours to keep, by the way. You don't have to, like, turn that in. Um, and stuff. I'm going to put this here. So um, this is what is called an icon. And an icon, and this might be, like, one of the most maybe famous icons that's ever been written. Icons, by the way, are written. They're not drawn. They're not painted. This icon was written by Andrei Rublev, um, and it's simply called the Trinity, and we are here at Trinity Church. It seemed appropriate. Now, Rublev wrote this icon as a, de as a depiction of a scene that happens in Genesis 18. You've got these three visitors that visit the tent of Abraham. And as soon as they arrive, Abraham gets up and he quickly get, gets some food and he gets some drink and he brings it out to them and he sort of seats them and, and they, they eat and drink and have their feel, uh, fill and then they go on their way. And it becomes clear during this scene that Abraham and his wife Sarah, they're suddenly aware that this was God who had visited them. There were three persons and yet it was the one true God that had just been in their midst. So Rublev reads this scene, and he's like, I'm going to paint me a picture, because it's just so gush darn beautiful. Apparently, Rublev had a southern accent, even though he's Russian. Um, so um, now it's important to remember that Rublev is not depicting historical reality here. Like, this isn't a screenshot from the video that was being taken while this visitation was going on. Rublev is instead communicating theological truth. So let's take a look at this. Grab your copy and let's sort of see what we see. Now, if you first notice, all three faces on the different, on the different figures and the visitors have the same face. Why? Well, because it's one God. Three persons, but one God. You've got the Father, the Creator is on the left. Um, and then the Son, the Redeemer is in the middle. And then the Spirit or the Sustainer is on the right. Now, if you notice also, all three are wearing garments, and all of them have a similar color that's going on. That's the color blue, right? They all have some blue on them. In religious and um, iconography, blue is the color of divinity. But they've also got this other, some other colors going on, don't they? The father on the left has this sort of like gold overlay, right? And that signifies kingship. The sun in the middle sort of has this sort of brownish and reddish shawl on. That signifies, like, the colors signify earth and blood. The Genesis 2 account of creation, right? Humans are created out of the clay of the earth. And the blood obviously referring to the sacrifice of Christ. Now, you see how the, the sun is also holding up two fingers, right? He's all like, peace, love, man, yeah. That's not why he's doing it. He's actually referring to the two natures of Christ, right? Both human and divine. 
And we also have this green color going on with the spirit over on the right. And this refers to how the spirit was present at creation, how the spirit brings life and brings growth. Theologians for centuries have used this color green to sort of talk about the spirit saying that God is doing something in the midst of creation and creating new things all the time, even here in the midst of us today. Now, if you look a little more closely, the son and the spirit are both looking at the Father. They are honoring the Creator. Each of the figures also is holding a staff, sort of shows their authority. But enough of what they're wearing and sort of like what they're holding and all the colors and stuff. Where are they? What are they doing? I mean, it kind of looks like they're, they're sort of sitting at a table and they're sort of in the middle of the table. There's a bowl with some food. So they're, they're sharing a meal together. They're eating together. This is, this is critical. Do not miss this. The fact that they're eating together means that they are in relationship with each other. Because that's what we do, isn't it? We get together, we hang out, and we eat good food together. At the core of who God is, is this community of people who are hanging out together. Now the implications of this are far reaching, but what I wanna make sure that you hear this morning is this. The doctrine of the Trinity is not something for you to believe in. It's, there's not a ch- if there's a checklist of things like to believe or not believe in, the Trinity is not on that. The Trinity is a relationship for you to enter into. Let me say that again. The Trinity is not a doctrine for you to believe. It is a relationship for you to enter into. Now, what do we know about relationships? We've all, we all have relationships with friends and loved ones. Well, relationships sort of, they kind of have a flow, don't they? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like you have friends that, and they're they're sort of in this flow, there's these ups and these downs and back and forth. Like sometimes your relationship with some friends is going really, really well. Other times, not so much. Like there's a rhythm to them. It's almost like there's a dance going on, and sometimes you and your friends, like you're dancing, you're grooving, things are going great. I can't dance, but whatever. Sometimes you're stepping out, and you're falling all over each other because you or somebody else is like, they're out of rhythm. They're not marching to the same beat. And the flow of that relationship is disrupted. It's the same with the Trinity. It is the same with the Trinity. You are invited into that flow, into this rhythm, You're invited to dance. We see this in our Old Testament lesson this morning. God is giving the Hebrew people, through Moses, a new way to be human. Because remember, they had just been in slavery and had been rescued, where their only value as humans came from how many bricks can you make, right? They had been dehumanized for centuries. But God now has called them out of that and into this flow to be a part of what God is doing in the world. Look at your Old Testament text for a moment. God tells the people to be unbiased in how they treat the poor versus how they treat the great. The people of God shouldn't have hate in their heart. They certainly don't seek out revenge. Like when we do favor one group over another, we disrupt the flow. When we seek revenge, we are not in rhythm with God. Loving your neighbor as yourself, that's the dance. That's what we do. It's, it's being generous versus being stingy, right? It's, it's forgiveness versus revenge. It's caring for the least of these versus caring for yourself only. Like, we know this already. Like, it's intuitive to us. How many of you have ever just felt that amazing feeling when you've taken the opportunity to serve someone, right? Yeah, that happens. And it happens because you're tapping into that divine flow. You are entering the dance. Even our gospel lesson shows us this this morning. Like loving God and loving our neighbor is central to what it means to be a part of what God is up to in this world. Nothing that we do is outside of those two things. And they aren't separated. Jesus says they are alike. Loving God means you will give love to your neighbor. Loving, giving love to your neighbor means you are loving God. At the center of this thing that we do, this sort of God, Jesus, Bible, church thing, at the center of it all is this truth. 
God has given the Son to us. The Son gives his life for us. The Spirit gives life and truth and grace and peace to all of us. Woven into the Trinity is this like spirit of giving and generosity. Come on, can I get an amen? Right? I mean, that is a solid reason to ask you to pledge to ask you to fill out a pledge card later. All right? Now you might be saying, Aaron, bang up job, great stuff, really, really great. But what does this mean for us here at Trinity Episcopal Church in Oshkosh? Look back at your icon, please. You see the three figures around the table. Look closely. How many sides are at that table? Four. It's a four-sided table. Who's that fourth spot for? It's you. It's me. It's us. The purpose of this icon is for us to meditate on the fact that we're invited to pull up a seat and join the party. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I? Maybe that's a question we need to ask. Are there things that are keeping you from pulling up to the table? Is there stuff going on in your life that makes it difficult to sort of step into that divine flow of the Trinity? Are you struggling with some things that make it hard to see and participate in this, like, the truth that at the heart of the Trinity is this spirit of giving. Maybe there's some resentment, some cynicism. Maybe you're experiencing some bitterness. Like those things that just, that, that rob you of that joy. Here is my invitation to you this morning. In just a second, we're going to take a few moments and meditate using this icon. It won't be for a long, long time, but it will give you some time. And as you meditate, I invite you to confess in your heart anything that you know that is keeping you from stepping into that divine flow, from pulling up and having a seat at that table. And after a little while, I'll sort of make eye contact with some of the ushers, and then they're going to hand out and distribute the estimate of giving cards. You'll have several minutes to sort of fill out that card. And when you finish, please bring it up here and place it in this bowl here at the, at the base and place it in there as a way of offering unto God and pulling up a seat at the table to enter into that divine flow, this rhythm. Join the dance. If you're here as an individual, you can come up by yourself or, or bring someone with you. Uh, if you're here with your spouse or significant others, uh, please come up together. If you're here as part of your family, I invite you to come up as a family. If you're a visitor here and you've wandered in, wondering what in the heck is going on today, or if this is not your normal place of worship on a Sunday, please know you're, you are welcome here. Um, please be, be in prayer uh, for, those of, for those who are coming up and, uh, and placing their card in the bowl. Uh, Father Chris and your vestry want you to know that there's absolutely no requirement that you make a pledge, but if you could at the very least fill out the card to make sure that the church has your current contact information. So now, my friends, I invite you to pull out your icon and for a little while meditate on what it looks like for you to pull up a seat at that table. Confess anything that might be keeping you from doing so and join the divine flow of the Trinity.